Hey everyone, how's it going? Okay, in this video, this is a tribute to Van Halen and Eddie Van Halen. Um, uh, ever since Eddie Van Halen passed away a few weeks ago, there has been a huge uh, interest online in his music. So you get all these people who react to videos they've never seen before, music videos they've ever seen before, mostly younger people in their late teens or early 20s are reacting to Van Halen videos for the very first time uh, because Eddie Van Halen passed away so they're watching his Alive Eruption video from 86 and various music videos from Van Halen uh, so a lot of these younger kids are, are discovering Van Halen for the first time like I said since Eddie passed away so it, it I've been seeing a lot of that, a lot of that online, and I still go on, you know, Facebook and Instagram, and every now and then we'll see pictures of Eddie. Just recently, I saw a special video on YouTube. Some of the people that work at Sunset Sound in Hollywood were discussing what's in the Warner Brothers vaults as far as unheard Van Halen recordings from, from their first five albums and what could possibly be released and they were discussing it in a video which was very interesting to listen to so it got me thinking you know I got some uh, I'm a big Van Halen fan since God since I was in high school which was a long time ago and since I've got into vinyl collecting I've collected some very odd hard to find Van Halen items and some that are just cool to look at not really and I just wanted to show them in this video. So here we are, a little vinyl tribute to Van Halen and Eddie Van Halen. Now, when I heard the news of him passing, the day he passed away, you know, of course, I made my Rest in Peace Eddie Van Halen video and, and uh, uploaded it here on YouTube. And after I was done with that, the first Van Halen album I spun on my turntable after hearing of his passing was a bootleg, actually. And it's a bootleg from April 3rd 1978 live at Pogo's nightclub in Wichita Kansas so very very early Van Halen bootleg on vinyl this is a soundboard recording and it sounds so great absolutely great now I guess the deal with this was um, uh, Van Halen had just released its first album its debut album and this was a showcase for uh, up-and-coming bands. So, um, showcase for up-and-coming bands during the 70s. And, uh, and uh, they captured the whole show on one LP. This is a bootleg uh, record. Uh, it was a soundboard recording, so the recording is really good. It's a really good recording as far as sound quality-wise. And it has that cool small nightclub intimate sound <laughs> so you can tell they're playing in a very very small club that has that cool sound it's on colored vinyl it's a really nice looking record yeah and they're just playing songs from their first album they practically play the whole album on this thing on fire show your love there's a bass solo running with the devil Tommy punk there's a drum solo a little dreamer and talking about love ice cream man eruption you really got me and then they end with a cover of summertime blues so damn cool uh, record and the soundboard recording caught a awesome show Van Halen sounds young hungry energetic uh, they sound like a band that will play any place that will have them <laughs> so any stage that will hold them they'll give it their all and they're just introducing themselves to the rock world and that's what this album captures and it captures it really well um, it's a great bootleg and like I said this is the first thing I spun after learning Eddie passed away and this was such a great record uh, to spin uh, just to honor the man and pay tribute to the man and the band as well so very very glad i had this in the collection i might spin it again from done filming <laughs> uh this one was an interesting i listened to this one like a week ago or so um it's called zero demos by van halen and that's a familiar cover but what this is 
This is the 1976 demos that was produced by Gene Simmons. So basically Gene Simmons discovered Van Halen, offered to record a demo of songs, a total of 10 songs, and he would shop it for them and try to give them a record deal. And for whatever reason, things didn't work out the way they had hoped. They shopped all these songs and they, unfortunately they didn't get signed back in 1976. And um, Gene just let him keep the demos. Even though he paid for them, he let him keep the demos. And um, they were free to do whatever they wanted with them. And eventually the band did get signed a few years later, a couple of years later. And um, this is an album collection of those demos that were produced by Gene Simmons. It's also on colored vinyl, a really nice looking record. And they sound great. Uh, you get to hear early versions of the classic songs. On Fire, Women in Love, which is very different from the version that ended up on their second album. House in Pain, which was later retitled House of Pain, which is the last track on the album 1984. Running with the Devil, slightly different arrangement <laughs> than what we heard on the, on the classic album. She's the Woman, which actually ended up on uh, the last studio record where they reunited with uh, David Lee Roth, Different Kind of Truth. And then another call, another song, Side B's songs I've never heard of, like Let's Get Rockin', Big Trouble. There's a version of Somebody Get Me a Doctor, which was on their second album. And it's funny, on the first Ben Halen record, Running With The Devil starts with the car horns in the, in the intro. Well, it doesn't do that in this one, when this version of Running With The Devil, but the car horns can be heard and somebody get me a doctor. So obviously they kept that idea, but uses the intro to another song. And another song called uh, Babe Don't Leave Me Alone and Put Out the Lights. This is a really cool rock and roll record. Uh, it has that 70s rock sound to it. It almost it reminds me a little bit of Black Sabbath and Aerosmith, this, this record. I mean, it sounds really cool. David Lee Ross voice sounds so much a little bit higher on this album than he would on the first album. Uh, from what I heard, after years after making this demo record, David Lee Roth got some professional voice lessons before laying down tracks for the first album. So, so um, his voice actually did get better for the first album than compared to these demos. Not that his voice is bad on it, um, but you do hear improvement on the first record compared to this album of demos. So this is a real cool record to have if you're a big Van Halen fan, just like to have the early stuff. Now, from what I saw in a YouTube video, Warner Brothers has even more stuff in their vaults uh, from Van Halen uh, throughout, throughout their career with David Lee Roth uh, while they were still recording the Warner Brothers Studios. And uh, real interesting, if anything comes from that, if any kind of release. I want to show these real quick because these are Japanese pressings of some Van Halen records that I managed to score. There's a lot more to score. But uh, they're Van Halen 2, Japanese pressing with the Obi strip. This was uh, cool to find. Uh, this is probably, I think, I like listening to this record more than the first album. Though the first album is classic and hands down it's, um, it's awesome. Uh, but for some reason, I prefer this album over the first one. This, this album's killer. <laughs> I absolutely think this album's killer. These Japanese pressings are really nice and the pressings are always good. And uh, it's just nice to have in your collection, especially being a big Van Halen fan. It's nice to have these rarities. They're not easy to find. So really glad that I scored it. Um, this is just, I don't think there's one bad song on this album. I dig this whole record from start to finish. It, it is killer, absolutely killer. And um, so glad I have it. I might spin this one too. <laughs> I did spin it. Um, that's funny, I did spin this record once, and it was like a week or so before Eddie Van Halen passed away. I just, one night, I was really in the mood to hear it, and I just threw it on. This I scored recently, uh, about a month or so ago, and uh, glad I did. Uh, it's a Japanese pressing of the album 1984. 
really cool. And there's the, well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. There's the banded pictures in the back there. Yeah, uh, I'm glad I scored. I think I still got the price tag on it. I think it was like almost 20 bucks, this copy here. Now, I'm afraid to even look up online to see what this would go for now. Now that after Eddie's passed away, this will probably triple in price now. As that's always the way when these legendary musicians unfortunately pass away. And the, these... Uh, import pressings of their records just go sky high it's crazy so i'm kind of glad i'm very glad i bought this when he was still alive <laughs> oh such a good feeling you know i it's in it's in my collection that's where it's going to stay i'm not going to sell it i'm not going to go online and ask for some outrageous price i'm a collector I buy to collect records, not to sell them and flip them. So, um, <clears throat> permanent home here in my shelves for this uh, 19. Not my favorite Van Halen album, but there are some classic songs on here that I really enjoy listening to. I love the drum sound on this record. <laughs> I think they got the drum sound really good on this album. Just killer. So, dig that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show another live recording. This is very rare. Uh, it's from the Westwood One Radio Network. They used to have a superstar concert series on FM radio back in the 80s. Uh, live recordings of the, of the big bands of the times. And they had one for Van Halen back in December of 1986. Is the air date of this radio special. And it was the first tour they did with Sammy Hagar as this lead singer. And here's the cue sheet right here. Uh, it even includes the commercials, the Coca-Cola commercials on here, because it was sponsored by Coca-Cola. So you get a couple of Van Halen songs and a couple of Coca-Cola commercials on each side. <clears throat> and this was the radio show uh, for Van Halen back in the day. And basically, if you own the Live Without a Net home in-concert video, um, it's the audio from that show, basically. Um, because it has what does it have on here it has one way to rock hot summer nights 5150 panama best of both worlds love walks in good enough wild thing those are the two songs that weren't included on the video but it's on this record set i can't drive 55 ain't talking about love and the last two songs is why can't this be love and rock and roll which is the led zeppelin cover that they would end their shows with back in those days. And it's the whole radio show on three LPs. I'll just show you one LP because all the labels look the same. There we go. Just like the front artwork. It's the whole radio show from back in the day. And I remember hearing these radio shows on, on my local station. I do remember the Van Halen one. I remember they played a Phil Collins one back in 85 when Susudio was a big song and Miami Vice was on, still a new show. And so In the in the Air Tonight was a big song and I remember they played his concert uh, on the radio. <laughs> the whole concert was on the radio. I miss those days. I don't do that now where they would play whole concerts on the radio it was cool to listen to back in the day and uh, it's nice to have these record sets that just bring you back to that and um, I got other ones and one for Foreigner one for the Cars and Huey Lewis and these are fun to collect if you ever find them I think they have one for for Phil Collins which I would love to score let me show you some 45s break it up a little bit here um, this is somewhat rare <laughs> It's uh, Van Halen, Best of Both Worlds. Uh, I think uh, one side is the studio version, one side is the live version from basically the this show right here. <laughs> yeah, so one side is live, and one side is the studio version of Best of Both Worlds. This is the live version right here. So really cool to have this. I don't see this around all that often. So that was a nice score. Now this one is really cool. This is Hot for Teacher. And the B-side being Little Dreamer. 
I'm not sure what pressing this is from, UK or whatever. Um, and I guess this was once a jukebox record because there's the little label there. And this opens up, let's see, opens up like a book here. And you can take this insert out. It's like a mini poster. It has a picture of each band member. If I can get that in, there we go. So there's... Eddie and David Lee Roth, there's Michael Anthony and Alex Van Halen. Really cool, really cool. And of course the Warner Brothers record is in the plastic. I don't really listen to this very often. I just like collecting these sort of things. So like I said, A side is Harford Teacher, B side is Little Dreamer. And uh, it's just a cool thing to have. I've never seen it before anything packaged quite like this and um, I've seen a uh, hot for teacher 45 before but it had a, a different cover to it like a classroom uh, picture with a hot teacher in it so um, this was something pretty rare so I was glad to, to, I think I found this in, when I took a trip to LA and I could have believe I believe it was um, God, what's the name of that place <laughs> now I can't remember a uh, record surplus, which is actually pretty close to the Santa Monica Pier. That's where I got this. That's where I scored this record surplus. It's a good store. Uh, here's another rare one. Uh, this is a uh, song, Don't Tell Me What Love Can Do, which was from the Balance album. Um, very rare pressing of this 45. And I, I believe this was a German pressing. Um, but I forgot what, I, I believe it was pressed in Germany. And it's on colored vinyl, purple vinyl. If I could just get it out here, there we go. Uh, no, UK, sorry. UK pressing of the album. So really cool. So there we are, it's on purple vinyl. And I have never seen this ever since. <laughs> I bought this years ago in a shop in Sacramento, which is now closed, which is Dimple Records. And this is the last time I've ever seen anyone uh, had a copy of this to buy in their store. Um, I don't even remember what I paid for it, to tell you the truth. I don't remember if it was an expensive item or not. <laughs> it was so long ago that I bought this. You know, I don't even remember how much I paid for it. But my eyes just went boom! when I saw it I was like oh man I gotta have that it is a cool song I, uh, Balance I think was a good record it was the last one this lineup did <laughs> in the studio well they reformed later put on a compilation with a couple of new songs years later but this was the last full studio album they did together and I'm a big fan of that album I like Balance and the last 45 will show is uh, She's the Woman from Van Halen. This was uh, from their album when they reunited with David Lee Roth, A Different Kind of Truth. And on that Demos album, this song was included on there. So this dates back all the way to 76, but they blew the dust off of it in the two, early 2000s. And um, I think this came out in 2012, if I believe. And it's a cool record. It's a cool song. And uh, ah, nice, nice custom label there of the album artwork from that album. Different kind of truth. Really cool to have that. Really cool to have that. So, ah, very interesting piece of vinyl. I think the B side is an interview with David Lee Roth where he talks, I think it's called Brown M&Ms, I believe. And he just tells stories of their first tour and all the mayhem that went along with it. So pretty nice, pretty nice. <clears throat> all right, let's finish up some studio albums you don't see very often. They're hard to find. I would hope now that he's passed away, the record company would put out remastered versions on vinyl so everybody can own them. Uh, the first one is for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge such a great album <laughs> such a great album i still remember when pound cake first premiered on the radio and i was so excited when i heard it i thought oh my god what a great song 
and that was my favorite song that entire year <laughs> and I saw two shows from this tour in 91 and um, both in Sacramento and those were some amazing shows just amazing shows I had a great time the first show I saw on this tour Alice in Chains opened and they filmed a live video for the song Top of the World that was at the Cal Expo Amphitheater in Sacramento so if you look up uh, Top of the World live Van Halen it'll be a black and white video you know that'll be the show I went to and El that's the one Alice in Chains opened for so such good memories still got the ticket stub from that and that was back in 91 Whew. I mean Alice in Chains was a new band back then and the new the new song they had out at the time was Man in a Box because at the time I saw them that was the only song I knew from Alice in Chains and they blew me away by how good they were on live on stage they were they were awesome uh, the next one is Balance this is one you don't see very often this like I said this was the last studio album they did with Sammy Hagar and this lineup this the Van Hagar lineup like I said a compilation would come out a little bit later and Hagar did a couple new songs with them uh, but this was like the last full-length studio album they did together so really glad to have this on vinyl this is a UK pressing and um, I'm still excited to have this on vinyl but they need to re-release and remaster these Sammy Hagar records and albums on well I guess no one releases CDs anymore but they <clears throat> they should remaster all the Hagar stuff all the Van Hagar albums uh, because those were good albums they were really successful they sold a lot of copies they had a lot of chart success and it deserves the once over it deserves a nice little polish I think people would be interested in buying them I think they would sell well and um, hell even though I already have the originals I would buy them <laughs> anyway uh, let's end with some um, 12 inch singles um, now I showed the 45 of this earlier this is a 12 inch single that goes along with best of both worlds uh, this is a promo copy only and it was to promote the live uh, in concert video live without a net and uh, so the A side we have the live version of best of both worlds and on the B side we have rock and roll live the Led Zeppelin, uh, Zeppelin cover that's what's on this and it's just the boring old Warner Brothers label nothing that exciting to look at there uh, but this is a cool thing to have because you know it was a promo only a single and um, yeah it, it's not something you see every day as well as this one for summer nights this is hard to find this 12 inch single and it's just summer nights on both sides at 33 and the third RPM <laughs> and uh, just to promote uh, the first album with Sammy Hagar <laughs> 5150 and once again Warner Brothers label but yeah and these are cool little 12 inch singles to have like I said they're pretty rare I got other ones but it, it's you know from the 1984 album and the 5150 and OU 12 albums that can easily be scored anywhere but these two are pretty hard to find I must admit now this is what I want to end on this is actually pretty cool it's not a Van Halen record it's Brian May and friends and Eddie Van Halen actually plays guitar on this album uh, there we go his name is in there uh, Starfleet Project is the name of the album by Brian May and Brian May and friends and when you look at the inner sleeve uh, look at that isn't that cool <laughs> and we got some pictures of Eddie in this inner sleeve here so that's a cool thing to see and a picture of him and Brian May together right there very nice very nice it's been a long time since I've spun this one too and it gets the custom label treatment as we see there 
I have not spun this in the longest time. And uh, <clears throat> another record I might want to visit after I turn off the camera. <laughs> well, that's it. That's just a few uh, Van Halen related goodies I have in my collection that I just thought I'd share. I didn't want to go through every studio album because we've seen those covers a lot, especially lately. <laughs> And what amazes me is now when I go to the record stores, it's hard to find any Van Halen vinyl. And when you do find it, my God, is it expensive. And then you look on it online, it's even crazier. Uh, people are really cashing in on the man passing away. I'm, I, I swear, um, every time someone legendary passes away, that's the deal. And um, oh well. If you're, But we, we here in the VC, we're smart. We collect these records long before he even caught a cold so <laughs> so rest in peace eddie van halen this was my tribute to van halen and showing some of the vinyl the rare vinyl i have of them and uh leave me something in the comments let me know what rare stuff you have do you have any of these albums or you probably got something even cooler than this share it with me i want to hear because um i love talking about the stuff i i get excited about this stuff all right that'll do it see you guys in the next video